Physics versus chemistry. That's kind of how I think about training. Uh, you can put any sport on that kind of continuum between physics and chemistry. Now, when I say physics, I'm talking about powerlifting. And when I say chemistry, I'm talking about marathon running, right? Physics in the sense of sheer weight, sheer tension through somebody's system to deal with one repetition, right? And as you kind of slide across that continuum to the other side of the, to, to the chemistry wing, uh, we're increasingly, increasingly getting less and less resistance, and more and more metabolic stress. Eventually get to completely to the, to the let's say, left-hand side of the spectrum, which is the chemistry section, and you're talking about aerobic energy systems. Marathon runners, right? These dudes can run for days, it seems. And the whole organism is built upon how do we process oxygen and our fuel reserves to make energy for us to run. But we don't want to kind of tap into that lactic acid system where we start producing really bad, you know, uh, detrimental uh, metabolites. We, we want to stay away from the lactic acid. We just want to suck oxygen in, burn some fat and, 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 and glycogen and make energy to run. We don't want to kind of tap into the lactic acid system. We can, but, you know, as soon as you start accumulating the lactic acid system, then you start breaking down and you have to stop eventually. Uh, that's the continuum of training that I think. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because I have gone from one extreme to the other not so extreme, but from one completely one rep max at 265 kilo deadlift to the very next day of doing a pig squat routine, which is a barrage of metabolic stress on the system and not a lot of stress on the damn physics side of things. It was pure chemistry. A set of 20 with a barbell, a set of 19 with 30 kilos, a set of 18 with uh, 40 kilos, and so on and so on. By the time I even got to 50% of one rep max, my legs were jelly. I've been assaulted by chemistry. I haven't even gotten to the damn, nowhere near what I can do with physics. Training for these two vastly different goals is very, very hard. It's not in the sense of still doing a 20 rep max. That's fine. But if you're going to go from a one rep max athlete all the way to a marathon runner, that's very, very difficult to do. In my you know, recent history, all I've ever done was just work with fives. I've been doing a lot, a lot of fives on the squats, and so I'm pretty good at that. But doing a set of 20 is kind of far away from the fives. And so if you don't practice that, you're going to struggle with 20s, even though the weight is so simple, so simple to your mind to think, of course I can do a barbell for 20. Can you do a barbell for 100? Can you do 150, let's just say 100 bodyweight squats, and you can squat 200. That's my case, right? I can squat 210 kilos. But squatting 100 bodyweight squats, it is difficult, right? So that is zero kilos on my back, right? I'm just moving my own damn body weight. So my max is 300 kilos on the bar, and this is zero kilos on the bar, not nothing. This is just my own body weight, and I struggle to get to 100. Why? Chemistry. My body is not used to dealing with the metabolites, the lactic acid system. Dealing with those waste products of repeated submaximal efforts. It's a different sport. It's a different sport. It's just, it's very, very hard to train the three different energy systems. So I'm not an expert in biology or anything like this. This is mostly me thinking about from the early nursing school days and maybe even high school days when I was studying PE, when they were talking about the three energy systems. You have ATP, CP system, which is kind of that energy that doesn't really need oxygen at all. If it's up to zero seconds to 15 seconds can be pure ATP, CP, right? You don't need anything. After that, to think about two minutes, something like that, might be mistaken by that, somebody will probably correct me, is the lactic acid system, where you start breaking down, you start going into aerobic capacities, you start to kind of uh, require oxygen it's no longer anaerobic uh energy system you need some oxygen but the debt is too high and you start kind of asking for some oxygen to start breathing really hard this is where your muscles start to ache and burn and all that sort of stuff and then you have the other side which is kind of like the opposite of the first system which is a pure aerobic system in this system you are just simply running and you are using what you are breathing in and that's it there's no lactic acid that's my rough understanding of this thing. So this, the second energy system is kind of a blend of the two. 
um, and then either side you have the anaerobic and then the aerobic on, on the other side. So when you are training, when you are thinking about getting better, whatever sport, you have to think about what does your sport ask you to do. Uh, weightlifting doesn't have you huffing and puffing on stage. Powerlifting doesn't have you huffing and puffing. Yet some of our training, we are huffing and puffing. So what is the benefit of that? There is benefits of that, hypertrophy and whatnot. But you need to train for both if you're going to be really good at that second energy system. So the peak squat routine is the lactic acid system, man. You are jelly. My body was in shock because I was like, we're not used to this type of burn. Okay. And so the lactic acid started producing. I started getting a lower back pump. And this is all on the back of <laughs> doing one rep max on my deadlift the day before. And so I've got sore erectors, completely sore erectors. <laughs> and then I go into a peak squat routine and it was just an utter shamble. I, was, I fell apart. And the effects of those two workouts rolled onto the third workout, right, which is today. And like I wasn't feeling strong. I worked up to 220 in the deadlift, 140 in the front squat. And I did some bench press. That was kind of uh, uninhibited and normal. Uh, but I just kept thinking about the whole energy system stuff. It's weird, right, because we all know what it feels like to have DOMS. I have DOMS from physics and I have DOMS from chemistry. And there's, the worst DOMS are basically a combination of both, right? We all know when you kind of do a, a bodybuilding kind of workout, especially let's say RDLs, and you take that stuff to like 10 or 20 repetitions with a moderate, moderate kind of to light weight. And you're just kind of like doing tension a lot for many, many repetitions. You wake up the next day and you are sore, hamstrings, glutes, erectors, whatnot. Two days ago, I did a one rep max on a deadlift, my PR attempt, oh, I got it, it was a PR, 265 kilos. And I've woken up yesterday and today even worse with proper, proper doms in my spinal erectors from one single rep. I got doms from one rep in the physics class which is equivalent for me doing hundreds of reps, let's say somewhere close to the chemistry class on that continuum. I find that remarkable that you can get so damn sore for one rep. That goes to show you that my muscles got challenged through a physics kind of way, not a chemistry. I wasn't huffing and puffing. There was no pump. There was no burn. There was nothing. Yet I woke up today with literally on palpation soreness. Now, what type of soreness from which class do you think is most, most beneficial to us? Definitely the physics, right? We're interested in one rep maxing. However, those type of attempts, the physics class is very, very heavy on the brain, on the central nervous system. It fries us. That type of all-out exertion is deadly to us, to our central nervous system. And so we, we would love to, right? If central nervous system was just this resilient beast and we could just always just do 95, 100% rep maxes, uh, uh, one rep maxes all the time, that would be fantastic. That's specificity like you, and that's how you get strong. But our energy system, our, our brain can't take that. And so we are forced to move away from that physics and start getting closer to that chemistry because we can't force our central nervous system to fight all the time like that. It can't be a war every single rep. This is why we start kind of going and, and, and kind of hoping to produce those muscular, uh, that muscular stimuli, that stimulation that we want without the CNS fatigue. So this is where we start getting to fives, maybe after 10 repetitions. That's kind of, after that, you're kind of getting too far away for specificity. You can still make that work, set to 20 and 50s and whatever. I've spoken about that. You can definitely do that. If you get really good at 20 rep max, you're probably got good at better at the 15 rep max and so on and so on. You can kind of work your way through blocks all the way down to a five rep max and then eventually a single. So it all kind of fits in. But in my mind, I found it really interesting that you could produce the same type of end result, which is soreness in the muscle, purely from one rep. It's insane to me, man. Um, and, and you know, the, the whole idea behind all of this was that I was kind of thinking about how to approach the peak squat routine. Um, you know, I remember thinking to myself a few months ago, oh man, if I get to a 220 kilo squat, one rep max, I reckon I'll be good enough to finish the, to finish the peak squat routine, which finishes at 210, right? It might not be that simple. It might not be that simple because of those things that I've just spoken about. It's a different energy system. It's a different sport. 
It challenges you from a different way. It's no longer you're attacking the castle through the front door. You have to attack from the flanks. It's a completely different form of attack. And this is where, like, you know, I, I've said this to you guys before. I like to look at other fields, other specialties and how they train. Crossfitters, right? They spend a lot of time in that second energy system, the, la the lactic acid system, right? They spend a lot of time there because a lot of that stuff is endurance-based, right? They've got to be able to run and, and do crazy amount of repetitions for, for time and all that stuff, right? So it's, it's a different sport. And so when you think about sports as abroad, pick any sport in your mind right now and think about what energy system are they mostly in. And that's how you structure the training sessions for those people. For we, well, Olympic weightlifting is fairly easy, right? It's fairly easy. You, you, no one's supposed to be huffing and puffing on stage. No one is. Whether it's Olympic uh, weightlifting or, or powerlifting. Bodybuilding is a different sport, right? Because bodybuilding wants you to live in that predominantly, maybe 90% of your time, to live in that lactic acid system because in that metabolic stress of spending your life in there, you produce anabolic effects to your body. Like, you know, we've spoken about lactic acid, how that produces, and there's all sorts of things going on. You know, uh, sarcoplasmic hypertension versus myofibrillar uh, uh, hypertrophy. So there's a lot of stuff to process here. But in my mind, I'm like, you know, going for a jog, for a weightlifter, that's all great, man. But you should spend like 5% of your time in that, of your training time in that. The rest should be spent closer to that first energy system. Practicing, practicing, practicing. And this is something that I've kind of played over the years. Like I remember three years ago, I want to say three years ago, before I got into squat every day, there was a time where I went, okay, let me see. I was actually inspired by George Lehman. I don't know whether you guys are um, aware of him. He's a very, very big fella, huge deadlifter, like 900 plus pounds, something like this. He hasn't been really uploading uh, fitness content for some some time, but uh, he talked about getting really strong in a 20 rep, you know, uh, kind of rep range, and that will carry over to one rep max eventually if you kind of peak for it. And I remember spending a whole bunch of time doing 20s on the deadlift, and there's a bunch of videos of me kind of doing this, um, just trying to push it, push it, push it, push it. I was surprised at that time, you know, experiments all, all my, my whole freaking life I'm experimenting, but I was surprised to see diminishing returns with that uh, because I was spending way too long in some of these blocks. Like I remember I spent three months doing just 20s. That's way too long. That was just me kind of feeling out periodization, me trying to kind of understand what's going on. Um, you know, that doesn't translate for you to be really good at physics. If you get really good at chemistry, it doesn't mean you're going to be good at physics. It just doesn't mean if, you, if you're smashing one rep maxes like crazy, like do you reckon Eddie Hall can run a marathon? He's got a 500 kilo deadlift. Do you reckon he can run? He can't. In fact, that one rep on the deadlift had him puffed out like somebody went for a freaking 800 meter sprint. That's weird, right? That's, that's interesting because he's not, he's not a chemistry guy. He's a physics guy. That's in my mind the most simplistic way of me thinking about training and, and where to kind of spend most of our currency, which is time, how to kind of train for what we want to train. And so I, like I remember now back in the day, man, when I was playing basketball, uh, I remember I was telling my coach, like, oh, I got some weights at home, blah, 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 blah. And he said, don't lift heavy weights. And I was like, no, but I want to lift heavy weights. And he's like, no, man, you, you need to work on, on, on reps. Get heaps of reps into your quads so you can run better. And I remember experimenting with that. That was kind of the first kind of side kind of introduction advice to weightlifting. Um, he kind of understood it better than me. He was like, you don't want to train something that you're not going to use. The majority of your time in basketball, you are in that two and maybe three energy system. You're not in the first energy system. Yeah, okay, we got to run, you got to jump, but that's not in a vacuum. You're not in a, you're not in a dunk competition. You've played 40 minutes and now you have to jump. Yes, jumping is a, it's a first energy system thing, but you've just ran without a timeout for like five minutes. You're exhausted. It's in the lactic acid system. Anyway, that's a whole bunch of thoughts that are running through my mind, kind of like trying to think about how do you train for a big squat routine because it's a metabolic assault before you get to physics. It's a chemistry assault before you get to physics. And so even though the weight is so light on you, your, your legs are jelly and they're quivering underneath you. Ah, Bradley Khan, I thank you, man. I really, really appreciate your support. You're the latest name on the Patreon list. Like I keep saying, you're on the fourth page now. It's a crazy amount of people you've joined who support me. Uh, 
hundred thousand people subscribe to the channel. Seems like hundreds of people on the Patreon list. I'm just blessed. I'm just in a in a in another kind of world of, of happiness. There's so much happiness and positivity around me. Um, so many comments. I'm trying to get to everyone, and everyone's so positive. It's just a beautiful, beautiful existence, and so motivating for me to just not only do these videos and think about the training and think about all these crazy thoughts that I have, but also go to the comment section and have an extension of some of my thoughts and then have your thoughts. Ah, it's a beautiful thing. I appreciate, appreciate all of you guys and uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.